What's up everyone, Takedown here, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about games that I recently played and finished. Let's get right into this. Okay, so for this video I'm hopefully going to turn it into a mini-series here on my channel where I basically talk about games that I've recently played and finished, not necessarily got the Platinum for, but played them to the point that I'm okay with not playing them anymore or just taking a break from them because I have a lot of games on backlog so whenever I finish games I'm hopefully going to continue this series in the future so today I'm only going to be talking about five games that I recently finished. Up first is Batman Arkham Knight which is basically a free roam Batman game. It is a lot of fun there is the main story which focuses on Scarecrow which is really in depth it's very interesting what happens with the your mind whenever you're playing the game because Scarecrow does some weird things. On top of that, Joker is in your ear at all times because you killed him in previous games and you're infected with a Joker kind of virus which affects you and you learn more about it throughout the story mode, the main story of the game. So to learn everything and see what happens. I never played the previous games but it always, apparently it ties into the previous games so it's a lot of fun. Also talking about previous games, for Arkham Knight, they decided to expand the roadways so you're able to drive the Batmobile. In Arkham Knight, you have the ability to drive the Batmobile, which is a lot of fun. In previous games, they didn't have the Batmobile because the roads were so small, so they basically took Gotham and expanded it. So the roadways and everything are expanded a little bit more, so you can actually drive the Batmobile in it. That's something that they really wanted, and it is a lot of fun to do. On top of that, there is side quests, which are always fun. The Riddler, which is really intense. Problem is, once you do all of the Riddler kind of missions or quests or whatever you want to call them, at the end, to be able to defeat Riddler, you have to go and find all of the riddles and pass them throughout all of Gotham, which is a lot of work, which is something that I decided not to do. There's also side quests for Two-Face, the Penguin, Firefly, uh, there's a serial killer, there's a lot of militia ones, so this game will definitely keep you busy. You'll definitely get a lot of trophies if that's what you're going for. And I've played it to the point that I'm okay with taking a break. There is a lot left that I can go and do, but this game is a lot of fun. The main story is insane, and what you learn about Batman and who the Arkham Knight actually is. If you played any of the previous games or you know anything of the backstory of Batman in general, this is a lot of fun. There's a lot of twists along the way. Next up is Ghostbusters Remastered. I believe this came out in October 2019. And this game here is the remastered version. The first one came out in 2008, which marks the 25th anniversary of the first Ghostbuster movies. In this game, what I found was a lot of fun is the fact that the actors, the voice actors for the game, are the original actors from the first two Ghostbuster movies, which... I thought that was amazing. There's a lot of bonus features that you get in the game as well. I'm not sure if it was just because it's the remastered version or maybe whenever they released the game in 2008 they included it, but they included things like showing you guys how they restored the Echo 1 and seeing that because I'm a car guy and having them talk about it because basically from the movies, the Ecto-1 Basically, after the movies, it sat in a storage facility and it just rotted away. So they had to restore it and it shows how they restored it in kind of like a video clip on the extras of the game, which was a lot of fun. On top of that, there's other videos where it talks about the trailer for the original Ghostbusters movies from the 80s. It talks about the trailer for the game that came out in 2008. The bonus features have the actors talking about what it meant to them to have made this video game because a lot of the actors from the original ones who are the voice actors for this game are saying, and it has this in the extras as well, that they consider this game the third movie because of how in-depth it was and how it brought everybody from the original cast back together. So that was a lot of fun for the gameplay of this game. There's a lot to do. It does feel, even though it's remastered on the PlayStation 4, it does feel like an early PlayStation 3 game with the graphics, the gameplay, and what you have to do. But the story is a lot of fun. It is in. It basically takes place two years after the second movie ended. So right in line with the story. That's why they used the original cast for the game. It's a lot of fun. I'd highly recommend it. I believe it's on sale 
I think I got it on sale for like $33. I think it's regular $40. It's definitely a short game. I think there's only 10 levels and it won't take you long to beat, but all the extra footage meant a lot. And it was really interesting to see how they created the game. So I thought that was awesome. And next up is Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. Basically, the reason why I wanted to play Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Among Thieves, and Drake's Deception is because I did play them. I did play the first two on the PlayStation 3 whenever I got my PlayStation 3. And whenever I purchased my PlayStation 4, it included the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection. But whenever I got my PlayStation 4, I decided not to play them, and I decided I'll play them in the future. And that just never came. So since I have a lot of backlog right now, I recently decided to go ahead and play those games because I really wanted to play Uncharted 4, but I didn't want to play Uncharted 4 before playing Uncharted 3 because I never played Uncharted 3, and I didn't want to just start off with Uncharted 3, so I decided to start off with the first game and play the first Uncharted game, then the second, and then the third, and I plan on getting Uncharted 4 and the game that came after, I believe it's called Lost Legacy. Hopefully I'll get them around Christmas because they're at Walmart for about $20, so we'll see. But the first three games were amazing. It reminded me of playing the games back on the PlayStation 3. The Uncharted games for me are a combination of shooting, which I do love shooting games. There's a lot of trophies you can get. I love trophy hunting. It is parkour, jumping off buildings, jumping like doing parkour in general, I think that was very creative that they had that in the game. That's why I always love the Uncharted series. The story is amazing. There is, again, a lot of trophies, but some of the trophies I decided not to go for because they involved doing an extra run through and playing the game once was enough for me. They are a lot of fun. If you have never played the Uncharted games, I definitely would recommend them. Uh, the first one, it's... So the gameplay is very simple. Um, there's not a lot to do. Basically just shoot and it gives you a guide of what to do. The second game's a little bit more in depth. And the third game actually has a lot more features that games these days currently have. Like whenever an enemy throws a grenade at you, you have the ability to throw it back. They added a lot more weapons and a lot more things that you can do in the third game than you did in the first two. So I thought that was a lot better. The shooting abilities, the mechanics of games in general for the third game was a lot more advanced. And the story throughout the years developed to the point that it was a lot of fun. I honestly love the story for all three games, but the third one, having never played it, was a lot more special for me. So I did manage to beat all three games. I did go and play the first one again to clean up as much trophies as I can get. And the second and third Uncharted games, I plan on going back and just trying to clean up a few more trophies. I want to say there might be five or six trophies each game that I have left that I want to just go and clean up and polish up. I'm not going to get the platinum for them because I don't want to work on the platinum, but there's a lot of other trophies that I can get. I think I'm going to say six trophies per game just to clean them up. And I do plan on getting Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy very soon. And I'm going to play them and hopefully talk about them in a later series that I talk about more games that I've played and beat. But these are the five games that I recently played in Beats. Honestly, they're a lot of fun. The Uncharted games are classic PlayStation games. They're a lot of fun. The story is great. They have parkour. They have shooting. They do have monsters and treasure hunting, which I think is a lot of fun. That's why I always loved the Uncharted series. Uh, Ghostbusters was a lot of fun. It reminded me of the original movies. So if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, I recommend checking out this game. And Batman Arkham Knights. It's a great open world game. And I definitely would recommend it whether you are a person that likes open world games or somebody that is a fan of Batman, you're going to love this game. It's a lot of fun. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm going to leave it here. Please take care. Peace.